Hello and welcome to another Lightboard session. And in this lesson, I'm going to talk about why do you need the continuous integration and then continuous delivery. Now, when you talk about the software, apart from you know building your features, uh, one of the most important feature of your software itself is reliability. And reliability is extremely important because if no matter how many features you have released for your software and how fast you're going, um, it is also important to make sure that your application is available when your customers access it, right? So it has to be available, it has to be scalable because you know it's not just about being available, but let's say if you start receiving more traffic, it also needs to scale well. Now, what affects, if you really look at what affects your reliability the most is the software defects, commonly known as the bugs. So when you have bugs in your software and they make it to the production, uh, it is going to cause downtimes. Some of those downtimes will cost you money. Some of those will cost you even some customers. It will definitely cost you your credibility. And not only that, it also causes a lot of rework for your developers and engineers. Instead of working on productive things, a lot of people in organizations would just be working on fixing the issues and the bugs and so on and so forth, right? So how do you minimize the defects is where to path to minimize the defects leads us to continuous and automated feedback. So getting the feedback is extremely important. And it's not just getting the feedback, it is also important to get that feedback in time. I typically give this example in my classes. So let's say in today's world, if you go to Instagram and you can see everybody, almost everyone today is a great photographer. And the reason for that is one is we have a camera in our pocket all the time. The second reason is if you look at the way we are taking the photography, we are using this continuous feedback system already, right? Because if you remember the film days, uh, you had the camera, you had to be really careful to click the photographs, you will take only a few photographs, and then you'll send it for, you know, uh, to get it pop, you know, printed and so on. It would take a few days, sometimes few weeks, and you would wait for your photographs, and once they arrive, oh, you'll actually see how it really came out. So the time between the you know, the time you took the photograph and you received the feedback, uh, there was a long, long interval. And by then, you know, you, you know, if you had gone to a place, a remote place somewhere or a different country, you can't go back to that country and improve one photograph and take another one. In today's world, you can take as many photographs you want, look at those. Oh, if it didn't turn out to be fine, that's okay, you can delete it, you can take another one. And that is a good example of continuous feedback. And it has helped us to improve our photography and that is for sure. And that is exactly what we want to do for our software. And that is where extreme programming in 1990s uh, started with this concept of continuously integrating your software uh, to the mainline. Typically, when you talk about integration, what does it really mean is, typically you, we are talking about the source code revision control system and you typically have a main line of code, could be your master branch, could be your main branch, could be you know, any any dev branch also, and you fork out. So for every you know feature that you want to build, you typically fork out, and there might be multiple teams working on different features, and some of those also fork out from this repository. So when you want to bring all of these changes, there are so many things happening in parallel actually. In a larger organization, this can even be really, really complex stuff. So it led to something called as an integration hell at one point of time. And that is the, that was because you, you know people used to, organizations used to work on this for a really long time. And when they try to integrate, there are so many changes which have gone into that branch and there would be you know issues with merging and so on and so forth so there was the integration hell and that is when the concept of integrating continuously integrating often and integrating fast came in so we are now talking about multiple integrations per day to the main line of code and the interesting part is once you integrate to this branch is when you trigger a set of tests so whenever this happens whenever this happens you can trigger a set of tests in an automated way you can create some pipelines of tests and you can say that hey i want to test whether this builds or not i also want to test 
by you know run some unit test and see if everything is okay or not in with my code um, all the sanity test i may want to do a static code analysis and also find out if there are any vulnerabilities in my code or not and then once everything is done i want to package my application create an artifact maybe push it somewhere and from there i could go take and let's say create another deployment pipeline uh, take this artifact and start deploying it somewhere maybe in a production environment or a pre-production environment initially and then once this is done i trigger a pipeline to deploy it in production and you can go all the way till here and this is the example of continuous integration where after every change you trigger this pipeline and get the feedback so if something fails here you get immediate feedback and back here back to the back to your developer uh, who can go and fix it quickly merge the code and then you know trigger another set of build and make sure it passes and that's about the continuous and immediate feedback. Uh, getting that is very important to improve, just like how we improve the quality of photography. Uh, it is important to improve the quality of our software continuously, iteratively, and that is where continuous integration helps us. And then you can extend this, you know, extend this uh, concept of continuously and automated pipelines and do that for you know, this is the CI part, and when you start deploying it, it is the continuous delivery, typically continuous deployment or continuous delivery part right here. And you have different tools to do this as well. So there are tools like Jenkins, which help you do this. There are tools like Spinnaker, which can help you with this as well. So that those are the concept of continuous integration. What we just talked about why you should bother about continuous integration. That is, it is gonna help you get the immediate feedback constantly continuous feedback whenever you integrate the code and then you can set up the automated pipeline improve the quality of your code quickly minimize the bugs and then go all the way and save your work and you know uh, your your efforts as well uh, by automating the deployments as well so you create a safer way of pushing your you know uh, products out the features out and uh, do that with the shortest amount of time with continuous automated process and this is what CI and CD will help you do and that's the reason why it is important and CI CD is a, one of the practices that you should definitely look at if you aspire to implement the DevOps into your organization or get started with site reliability or DevOps engineering.